Namaste. So if you've been following along our channel, I mean, really any time in the last five years or so, we've been talking a lot about these four states of consciousness. And it seems kind of odd to me that uh, I don't get more comments using the proper Sanskrit names for these different states. So maybe what we need to do is to just describe them using the English terminology. See, I want to start a group to go into these states of consciousness and educate people so that they can perceive them in themselves. And uh, the way it goes is like this. Say you meet somebody who is inclined towards the, you know, modern scientific explanation of consciousness, which is that it's a function of the neurological transformations of the brain. Wow, groovy, cool, man. What does that mean? Can you explain that to me? And 99 times out of 100, the person will say, uh, well, no, but so-and-so, Mr. Great Scientist, says so. I see. So do you believe in God? No. Why not? Oh, it's just, it's because it's just something in an old book as somebody said so. Oh. You're right. So you believe in this, you disbelieve in God because it's something somebody said a long time ago and wrote down in a book. But you believe in this theory of consciousness that some scientist wrote, even though you have absolutely no evidence, no proof whatsoever that this theory is true. What can they say? <laughs> Duh, well, uh. I mean, of course, they'll come up with some nonsense, you know, but it's it can be ignored because it doesn't make any sense. So then you just say, well, I have a new theory of consciousness. You want to hear it? And they go, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. OK, the theory is that consciousness is an absolute in the universe, just like space, time, gravity, and so on. And consciousness has four modes in all living creatures that we know about or have observed so far. So let me ask you something. Are you conscious? And of course, they're going to say, oh, uh, yeah, of course I'm conscious. Well, are you aware that you're conscious? And I say, well, of course I am. And I say, okay, very good. That is the first mode of consciousness, which is called the absolute consciousness, Turiya, the fourth mode of consciousness. Now, what about at night when you're asleep? Are there times when you're asleep that you don't have any dreams? Well, yeah, I guess so. I don't really remember. Well, that's okay. But you know there are times when you don't dream while you're asleep, right? Yeah, right. Okay, that's called sushupti, and that's the third mode of consciousness. But then what about when you have dreams? Oh, yeah, I have wild dreams, man. <laughs> yeah, everybody does. See, dreams are the second mode of consciousness. And when you're awake and aware of the outside world, those dreams are called thoughts. You know, like the inner conversation that you have with yourself. <laughs> 
That's the same kind of consciousness, a second mode. And the first mode is ordinary waking consciousness when you're aware of the senses and the world and all that. So you have all those four modes of consciousness and you experience them, right? Right, yeah, I guess. So you just prove the theory. And all the evidence for that theory comes from your own experience. Anybody can verify this theory or prove this theory simply by their everyday experience in life. But what about Dr. What's his name? Big scientist. How would you prove his theory? You would need a whole laboratory with all kinds of scientific instruments and trained technicians to run it. You'd have to run experimental trials and tabulate the results in some kind of a database and analyze it statistically and come up with a standard deviation that proves that the phenomena under question are correlated with such and such brain function, blah, blah, blah. But guess what? You still haven't proved that brain function is the cause of consciousness. Because there is a scientific principle called correlation does not imply causation. So you have fallen for a typical scam that unscrupulous scientists used to fund their programs. They use bad logic to imply that the correlation of two phenomena explains the cause. Oh, well, yeah, I guess you're right. Well, of course I'm right. <laughs> because I know these four stages of consciousness, these four types, four modes, whatever you want to call it. And now you do too. So actually, you just proved my theory, let's call it the new theory, or the mode theory, or the four mode theory, whatever you want to call it. You just proved it from your own experience in everyday life. No expensive equipment is necessary. No trained technicians, no lab. Huh? No uh, scientific protocols or you know, placebo experiments or any of that stuff, no controls, no, you know, experimental subject pool. Uh, none of that is needed. And guess what? Do you have a dog or cat? Oh, yeah, I have a dog. In fact, I look just like him. <laughs> yes, well, hmm. uh, if you observe your dog carefully, you will see that he has the same four states of consciousness. Sometimes he's awake and aware of the world and running around and stuff and barking. Sometimes he's asleep and he's dreaming. And you can see when he's dreaming because his legs and tail move. Sometimes he's in deep sleep without any dreams. And then his whole body is simply still, only breathing. And at all times, he is conscious that he is conscious. He's conscious of his consciousness. He's aware of his awareness. And that is the fourth. See, so these modes, one, two, three, four, waking, dreaming, deep sleep, and Turiya, the fourth. Awareness of awareness, consciousness of consciousness. These are all there, even in animals. Mm, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> See, so this theory of consciousness is not only easy to prove, you know, for yourself. You can prove it to anybody just by referencing their daily experience. Now, maybe they won't like it. Maybe, you know, they feel like you're challenging their settled understanding their stable datum about the nature of consciousness. 
but they can't defeat you. They can't even argue against it. I mean, who can argue, who can deny that you have consciousness of the world, consciousness of your mind and dreams and thoughts, consciousness with no dreams, huh? where there's no awareness of anything, and the awareness that you're aware, the consciousness of your consciousness. Nobody can deny this. This is the absolute. This is the cause underlying everything. Everything that exists in the world is only there because of consciousness. And if you're unconscious, you're not aware of it. It may as well not exist as far as you're concerned. So this is the actual truth, you see? This is our new theory of consciousness. And we're going to be putting together a course, a very, you know, formal, structured video course that you should watch and learn, and you should also show it to your friends. Because once they realize all this, they'll understand that the whole scientific theory is just as much of a religious belief as the organized religions that the scientists say they don't believe. See, because of the history of science, if you read up on it, there was a time when the Catholic Church was in control of all media, of all academic thought, of all public discourse, of all printed, well, this was you know, before there was a printing press. So books were actually copied by hand. And of course, they were only copied by scribes in monasteries under the control of the church. So there was a tremendous oppression and repression of any original thought. And everyone was more or less forced to believe in and go along with the doctrine of the church. Then... As soon as the printing press was invented, the Protestant Reformation happened. Actually, it was a revolution. Suddenly, it was possible to print books that had other ideas, new ideas. And so this group of people in Europe came up with what they called the Enlightenment. <laughs> and their idea of enlightenment was to simply come up with any and all arguments and theories that would defeat the church doctrine. And so from that day forward, science, material science, has been about proving religion wrong. So if you say anything like, oh, well, this science comes from the, this uh, theory of consciousness comes from the ancient Vedas, well, you're immediately going to lose them because they automatically, you know, knee-jerk reaction will decide against it. Oh, it comes from religion. Bad, wrong, no. <laughs> you see, this is as much a religion as the religion that they overthrew. This is as much as a repression as the old Catholic doctrine was, which is actually still going on today, that they rebelled against. So how is it that what is mistermed enlightenment huh, and a philosophy based on reason actually turns out to be just another religion. It's just they've taken God off the altar and put science in its place. That's all. But it's the same old game of controlling people's thoughts, having a story that is supposed to explain everything. And if anybody dares to think in a different way, they're immediately shut down and, and denied. You see? So this has to stop, and it will stop. We already see a tremendous 
reaction against so-called scientific thinking in the religious right. The conservatives, they're in denial about vaccines. They're in denial about space travel. I mean, all kinds of things. Any conspiracy theory that comes up that tends to make science look bad, well, they'll just snap it up in a second. <laughs> they're into it, man. So there is a ready-made audience, even though they may not be, you know, the kind of people we like to hang out with, but there is already a groundswell of opposition to scientific dogma, replacing religious dogma as the new religion of Western civilization, so-called. Like Gandhi said when he was asked, well, what do you think of Western civilization? He said, I think it would be a good idea. <laughs> Of course, he was talking mostly about uh, violence, exploitation, and animal killing. Because India had been the victim of the British Raj for over 200 years. And recently, someone calculated that the British stole, basically, more than $4 trillion worth of wealth from India during that time. Before the British and before the Muslims, before the British, there were the Muslim invaders. And after the Muslims and the British were through with India, it was one of the poorest nations in the world. Whereas before, it had been one of the richest nations in the world. So you see, this so-called science is just a front for political, economic, and moral or maybe immoral exploitation of peoples, especially if they're a different color from you. So we don't support it. Yes, there is a place for legitimate scientific experimentation. And basically, it's a form of exploratory engineering. You know, but let's just be honest about what it is. They're searching for new ways to control disease, new ways to make computers, new improvements to flying machines and so on, whatever. Great. But that's no basis for religion. Huh? I mean, instead of miracles, we have technological breakthroughs. That's what passes for a miracle under the present religion. So I say we dump it. Let's get rid of it. And instead, let's have our actually scientific religion that draws evidence from people's everyday life as to the nature of consciousness as the absolute. What I'm doing now is developing, you know, the sales pitch, all the benefits of consciousness studies and so on. And so, after the first of the year, we're going to launch this thing. It's called Consciousness Research Center. And this is going to be an, an experimental group here in Sri Lanka. And then gradually we'll expand it. But you are invited to participate. You are invited to watch these videos, download them, share them with your friends and so on. Start your own. Consciousness Research Center, wherever you are, and help people learn the actual reality of our human experience, the experience of being alive, the experience of life, which is indistinguishable from the experience of consciousness. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.